Welcome to another online weekly reflection from Bollock Shields Church of Scotland. Remember to email me on the email address in the description of this video if you want to be added to the mailing list and be reminded of new videos and also um, arrangements for the reopening of church, which has happened past Sunday. Today we will be talking about people's last words. It's interesting that we often pay very careful attention to what people's last words are. It doesn't matter if people die suddenly or after a long illness, the last words a human utters become somewhat mystical and more meaningful. Perhaps because we will never hear that person speak again, or maybe because these words are somehow more profound. If this is the case, why are these last words often considered more profound? In the case of a person coming to the end of their life after suffering a long illness, it might be that the person's last words are stripped of pretense, ulterior motives, and is somehow devoid of the clutter of trivial things. We rarely see documented words of people on their deathbeds talking about um, bills and TV shows, political issues, religious dogmatical philosophy, or bad customer service. It is often about the important things in life. It is often about family, love, forgiveness, joy, and peace. Stripped of the pretense and self-interest that too often marks our lives, we come to what is really important. Paul writes to this effect in Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 to 1 to 2, where he says, As for us, we have this large crowd of witnesses around us. So then let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and of the sin which holds on to us so tightly. And let us run with determination the race that lies before us. Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him, he thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross, and he is now seated at the right-hand side of God's throne. We sometimes forget that Jesus' life was marked with large, last words. In the last two years of his ministry, on his way to the cross, it is all documented in the Gospels as being important. And in it we see that his words are stripped of religious dogma. It's stripped of self-interest, financial wealth, political hang-ups, grudges, and the various things we cling on to dear life. What are you clinging on to now that you might discover later on down the line was really not that important and only took up time that could be used to love those around you, forgive those who hurt you, and live the life you living at present to the fullest, to find a purpose in our all too short lives. Let us pray. Lord, there's something in my nature that takes me so easily, like moth to light, to things that don't matter. I circle and flutter, batter wings, fly frantic for nothing. I fill my time with trivial things, crowd out the questions of who I really am and where I'm heading. In a panic progress, I persuade myself, at least I try to, that here and now is my concern. Then I discover that the yellow brick road of my own feelings leads not to fulfillment, but circles back to the starting point, And I'm left holding an A to Z of nowhere. Lord, calm me down. Inject a moment's peace into the bloodstream of my life, and in the peace help me to see the world whole, or if it's too much to ask, at least to see myself for what I am. Give me the courage to dive below the surface, to push aside the jetsam of my living, to catch a vision of what really matters, not a kaleidoscope of jumbled images changing with every twist of the tube, but, but clear and fresh in the light of your truth. Help me to grasp priorities, to understand a little of your purpose for the world and my place in it. Amen.